So let's talk about personalities. The one thing that I talk about with a lot of people who are starting out as IT professionals is to look out and observe different IT personalities. Why am I talking about personalities here? Well, they do have some reflection on how you should treat it and react to it. So there are different IT personalities and the biggest one that comes out among a lot of IT people is, well, being arrogant, um, very, very confident, and give the impression that they know everything. So IT personalities come in different combinations such as being very, very social. Um, you've seen those people that talk a lot about technology, this and that, kind of reading what the white paper would tell you, giving you a dog and pony show. That's what you could say that maybe they're a salesperson or a sales engineer, who knows, it doesn't matter. Limited social means that the individual who doesn't really say much. You know, they kind of keep themselves and say what they need to say at the appropriate times when it calls for it. Or a hybrid of some of those things, depending on the situation. Other IT personalities include what we talked about, the arrogant side. Or some that are very humble. They know what they know, they know what they do not know. Or some who may appear to be unconfident and they may kind of stagger around on what their point is or a hybrid of some of these things depending on what's going on and how they're feeling. So every IT person will be one of these combinations and you need to figure out uh, honestly which one of these personalities is closely resembles you and which one is considered as a conflict for you. For example, for me I would say that I am probably more limitedly social I'm not a very social kind of person. I mean, I talk with my friends or my family, but not socially where I can go on and on and on. Um, in terms of the bottom ones, I would say I'm definitely more humble. I definitely communicate what I know, and what I do not know. I say I know about this for networking because this is what I've done, this is my experience. But honestly, I think everyone is really a hybrid. And the perfect example is, well, I remember working at one place and someone told me, um, how do I configure a VLAN? So I went ahead and showed it to them. A week later, they asked me the same question. Okay, show it to them again. And this happened at least five more times. So it got to a point where, where, well, honestly, I was annoyed. And some of the arrogance kind of came out and I kind of caught myself doing that. And the thing is that they were starting out, they did not know, and they felt that I could help them with that. So a lot of IT people don't catch themselves and they may give off the arrogant vibe of, look, I've done it so many times, I told you how to do it, you need to learn how to do it. Observe these personalities. Another point I want to bring up is that in information technology, no matter how social they are, no matter how arrogant they may come off, everyone does not know everything. So you may say, wow, they know a lot about this. Maybe they're right, I'm wrong. Whatever your feeling is, they do not know everything because there are so many branches and then that has branches and that just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. I have worked in government networks where these are very, very smart people. And if I'm talking to a systems engineer, I mean, they'll tell you everything about Active Directory, everything about Linux infrastructures. But if I ask them a question about VLANs, they don't know that. But they won't really tell you that. Just kind of watch out for these personalities. So how do you handle a particular personality? One, you need to determine which personality is your conflict. For me, a person who comes off very arrogant, very social, and those combinations is a conflict for me. So how do you handle that? First, if you're working on something, like as a consultant for me, I may work with another consultant that may come off with some personality that doesn't, that's a conflict for me. I do what is needed before that person is involved. If I need to configure this BGP neighbor, I'm going to just do it. Okay, keep the conversation to a minimal. Um, and that's it, engage the person with limited and directly what is needed. Say, hey person next, can you please configure this neighbor and this is the password. If they say something like, well, you need to do this and that, you just do it if it makes sense and required. 
and the, and the other thing is, which is very important, take nothing personal. I've seen a lot of IT people who've been doing this for a long time li literally insult other professionals about what they say, how they think, how they troubleshoot. They just insult them. And um, for me, again, they do not know everything. So you can quickly put them on the spot on something that they do not have the experience with. It's because, again, everyone does not know everything. So take nothing personal what or what anyone has to say. Res resume and interviews. So the one thing you want to do for your resume, which I definitely learned, is you want to make your resume very organized and very clear. What am I talking about? You want your resume to reflect a couple of things. One, you want to reflect, like for example, with my resume. When I was working for um, companies, I indicated what my objective was. Okay, and that's kind of the second thing you see, which is your career objective and specialty. You're indicating what your skills are, your certifications. And IT certifications has a higher weight than getting a BS or a master's in some cases. So you want to reflect what your credentials are, like your CCNA, CCMP, or CCIE, even an MSFC, and that sort of thing. Uh, and sir, the Microsoft certification, my apologies. So you want to make those things clear and kind of organized in there. Also, your working experience. But you want to reflect what is your career objective and your specialty, such as you want to, that your specialty is with network engineering, with security or with voice and unified communications. You want to reflect what is your specialty because you want to make yourself unique among your field of, in this case, IT networking. Also be careful on what to put on your resume. Here's what I'm talking about. Just because you read about OSPF in a book you know, the day before the exam or before the interview doesn't mean you should necessarily put that on your resume. Because remember, anything on your resume is fair game for the interviewer. Uh, for example, for me, I look at people's resumes and I say, oh, OSPF. So I ask some questions about stub routing, virtual links. I, I start going down the questions. And sometimes they do not know how to answer the question. And I kind of figure out later on during the interview process that they just kind of just learned it. And once they learn it, they put it on their resume. Be very careful of that. I'll, I'll tell you a few things how to handle that, if, even if you do want to put that on your resume. But whatever you put on there is fair game for that interviewer to ask. The other thing is references. Um, everyone has their, has their allies, as I call them. And for the references, you want to indicate people within your company, um, like network engineering type people, that can vouch for you when you go on to another company. And um, this is what everybody does. And this is what the company just wants to, um, you know, who wants to hire you. They want to get references, not only from your boss, because they understand that. It doesn't make sense for you to apply at another job and give your boss, your current boss, as a reference. Now, and that's a career-limiting move right there. You want to avoid that. But giving people that can vouch for your um, ethics and how you work is definitely a good thing. Everyone has allies based on your types of friends with their personalities. Like for me, all my friends are very humble and they're great references and you know, very good to have on have on your side.